What comes to mind when I think of Peter is, first of all, his perseverance. He sets goals and he goes for those goals. There's a lot of distractions out there that can pull kids away from what the business is, what they're supposed to be doing. And he, uh, I don't see that in him. The Be A Jervis Cougar has been a pretty big deal to me because it's given me the opportunities to become FFA Vice President, which then turned to FFA President, off and on football team captain my junior and senior year, wrestling team captain now my senior year. I mean, it's given me so many opportunities just across the board. Well, my pratia, I was diagnosed, I think, in like second grade. When people say things, my brain doesn't hear them right. And it's not just my words that I have problems with, it's a lot of, uh, it's my body too. Like, my brain doesn't translate to the rest of my body correctly. I went to speech therapy. I remember just getting super frustrated and uh, I got picked on a lot for it too once I went to school. And so like that just made me work harder to learn how to talk. But uh, once I finally got that in my head, you know, I can talk, I can do this. I think I just kind of went from there like, well, if I could do that, what can I do? Like, I think I was just born with the, with the mindset that I can do anything. Peter, he was always that kind of one rep more kid. First kid on the field, last kid off the field, always asking questions. I joined wrestling with one goal, one goal only, and it was to be a better football player. My sophomore year, I thought I'd get in better shape and I'd get faster. I was told by one of my coaches I'd get a lot more agile, which was completely true. It'd work on my tackling, it'd work on uh, just everything, and it has. Every, every aspect of football got better with us during wrestling. Peter came right in as a sophomore. Of course, as you mentioned, new, didn't know anything. And I explain to these guys all the time, it's a very technical sport. You know, it's, it's gonna be tough. You're gonna have a big learning curve. It was very tough for Peter his first year. Uh, my coaches said that they were gonna start filming my matches because it was just funny to watch me get thrown. All my wrestling partners quit and I got stuck with just wrestling coaches. So I just got the crap beat out of me at practice every single day. As the season progressed, coaches were telling me, man, he's, he's getting tougher. There's situations that before, you know, I would put him on his back, I would pin him, or you know, he couldn't finish that shot. And, and um, as the year progressed, they kept coming back, and he's getting tougher, he's getting tougher. Wanting to be a better football player is what drove him to actually be a really good wrestler. I went into wrestling, and I was like, well, I didn't go to state for football, so I'm going to state for wrestling. It's happening, I'm going to state. Coming off of a one-win season the year before, I was just like, all right. Um, and I don't know about that, but hey, you know, let's work, and let's see how far we get. And so my junior year, I was like, I'm going. So I just kind of started pounding away, working harder, running outside of practice, lifting more weights. It paid off. I mean, I went to state. Uh, wish I would have done a little better at state, but I was just happy to be there. Peter's had a hard time. Um, he's had family issues. Um, housing issues. My uh, father had gotten a car accident and lost my family home that we were trying to buy, um, which was really hard because we didn't have another place to go. We had to split us all up. Uh, for a little bit, I was, I was depressed after we lost our house and stuff. And uh, I stayed with family, friends in Woodburn all the way up until the end of June. But after state and everything kind of calmed down, I joined track and for, uh, for a while there, I almost dropped out of high school, honestly. Uh, I was failing every class. He came up to me and said, if you don't get your grades up in like three days, you're not playing football your senior year. And I was just like, that hit me like a wall. I kind of just looked in the mirror and was like, that's not me, this isn't who I am. And so, I mean, I worked my butt off. I got all my grades up past every class. Uh, I think I actually finished with my best GPA. I just kind of got determined not to lose anymore. Coming from 0 and 9 to that, and then when we lost the house too, I just felt like I was losing everything. I was losing my horses, you know, all of our animals. My family was moving, you know, I was separated from them. I stayed with a teacher of mine for a week and a, for 
a week, then I stayed with a friend of mine for a week and a half. So then Peter went to living out of his vehicle that we didn't really, really know about for a while. He was basically homeless, but he wanted to finish his senior year. I looked at some options for him, and at first he was resistant because he didn't want to accept someone else's charity. And I said, Peter, it's not charity. We know your heart is here, and what you want to do, you want to graduate with your senior class. I'm not the only one at the school who said, um, you can live with me. I don't live in the district. I live about 30 miles from here, but I have a spare room. You can come live with me. We'll put you on our insurance. We'll put you on the cell phone because I knew he was going to be successful. Every hurdle that's been in front of Peter, he either runs through it or jumps over it. He does not let anything stop him. Even as a kid, if he was told, no, you can't do that, he found a way to do it. You just don't tell him he can't do it. That's just Peter. Peter's a good kid. He's, he's endured, he's persevered, and he's put up with the growing, and now he's able to lead through that. He's the president of the FFA, and he worked hard to get that position. He, has, he wants to be a leader in the community. He wants to set a good example for the other students around him. And I think that might have motivated him some in his wrestling success because he wanted to set a good example. Well, I like most about FFA is community service. The feeling of gratitude you get when you help someone, the pat on the back you get, you know. I mean, over $900 community service, and, and that's why I joined FFA for was the community service aspect of giving back to my community and giving back to all these people who do everything to help each other. I don't view myself as a leader, I just view myself as a guy trying to be the best he can be, you know. People see what I achieve by just living my life every day. That's just it, you know, people, if Peter McKinley can be the FBA president, I could be the FBA president, you know what I mean? I think I just power people that way to, if I could do it, why couldn't they? He's just one of those kids that I don't know, he just, he just keeps moving forward and he doesn't really want to look backwards, you know, like what does the next day have to offer? I'm going to go get it. I want to be remembered as just a great guy. Hopefully I can come back to Jervis and have a state championship, a uh, little plaque thing to look at, but I never expected to get good, never expected to go to state, never expected to be a team captain. Like something in life can only hold you down if you let it hold you down. And that's just how life is. I think he's got the heart, he's got the dedication, he's got the drive. I think he'll... I think he'll surprise us all. <laughs>